Good morning, guys. You know what time it is. It's time for a new review. We got a YMC. I don't even know what it is here, but I'll put it in the title. I already hooked up the DJI 03. All I had to do was plug in a cable right here, and we're going to set this up today. We're going to fly it. You're probably wondering what's the big difference between this one and this one. Well, this is a Whoop. This is a micro brushless, but the big difference is this one flies on 2S. This one flies on 4S. 4S. That's crazy. Um, this reminds me of some of the 4S micro brushless builds I was doing back in like 2015. And I'm just rewinding for some of you guys who weren't here. Um, we were trying to build things smaller and smaller and smaller. And I really wanted 4S on something super tiny. And it was almost freaking impossible to tune these things this small, um, un, you know, around two inch to, to under two inch propellers without having a ton of waggles. Because back then we were using F3s. Now we're all the way up to F7s. Um, F4 and F7 are kind of the standard now. But, you know, five years ago in the early days, that was a bitch. Um, so now we're, now we're somewhere where things are getting smaller, more powerful, and this should be a lot of fun. And at this point, you know, guys, like these reviews are, you know, I, I want these reviews to be, uh, as, you know, an opinion as we go. Like, I, I want these things to kind of be like a real time type of review instead of just like a bunch of regurgitated, pre-edited, uh, shit you know what i mean so uh, i want you guys to see a lot of this stuff as it's happening in these videos and that way you get more of a, pers a pilot's perspective and not like a freaking advertisement um, and we've talked about that on the channel so you might see some of the format of this channel changing to more of a kind of vlog style um, review so if you're looking for like a whole bunch of information super super quick I mean, you know, there's channels out there that'll give you like a three minute video, a five minute video, a 10 minute video. Um, but today we're just going to hang out with this quad and we're going to take our time and review it. Um, it's the uh, E1 drone. It looks like the E1. So yeah, you'll get some honest information in this review about this quad and uh, we're going to jump into it. Let's, let's build this one up. This is my third cup of coffee, and uh, we'll pair up the goggles. Got some uh, ELRS on here all ready to go, so I'm gonna pair that up with my Boxer. It's my favorite radio, if you guys don't know that. If you wanna buy the best radio out there, um, for me, the best for me, maybe not for you, that's for you guys to decide what's the best. But I like the Boxer, that's what I'm sticking with for now. So. Let me go ahead and screw this thing down to the frame and uh, bind it up and we'll go fly on 4S. Got a 4S 380 milliamp battery. It's freaking about this big. I also have some 4S 450s, which I would probably think that this is probably going to be better for. Um, these are 1200 series motors. And let's, uh, let's do it, guys. Let's go fly. All right, guys, this part of the review, we're going to talk about this quad on the bench. I'm going to show you a little bit of spec. We're going to talk about price, and we're also going to talk about ELRS. I would suggest TBS Crossfire Nano. If you can swing it, it's going to make it more expensive. Uh, this also may be the most expensive micro for DJI 03. This comes in at $479 with an ELRS 2.4 receiver on there. So um, this is like the rich man's two inch with DJI 03 on board. But I mean, if we're talking about weight here, we're also talking about one of the lightest micro brushless 4S DJI um, quads out there. So I'm just gonna bend that down, you can see right there, and let's just put it on the scale as is right here. I'm just gonna slam everything on here. And we need props as well, probably. So um, props are not on this quad. That will add probably another maybe five grams or something. I don't know, 118.1 grams without the props. Uh, with the battery, you're still gonna be way under 250 grams. They suggest this 4S380. Um, so you're probably gonna be somewhere around the 150 gram mark at that point, but that's actually 
that's 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 pretty good for something so small and it's insane to run 4s on a two inch quad i've done it in the past and again it's like super super fun um it feels like a, it really does feel like a five inch um and i gotta tell you you have to try it um uh, and this is new for me too because i'm trying this for the first time with my DJI 03 on board. So I've never flown a two inch quad on 4S with DJI 03 on board. So that's that's gonna be fun for me. Um, and on the website, it looks like they call it the Small Eagle E1. So this is the nickname for it, Small Eagle. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to Betaflight right now. Um, and you, you can get it, you can hook this up for analog. If you guys are wondering like, is there an analog version available? Yeah, um, you can do that. It is using Jim Fan 2023 three blade props, by the way, uh, which I have in the box right here. And let's just check it out real quick. It comes with some some uh, TPU battery mounts for the bottom. It also comes with a strap, thank God, because that's usually my preference. And these are the Jim Fan 2023s, three blade. You get a little tiny, it looks like a maybe a, a two mil driver, another strap, and a bunch of YMZ stickers and some GNB stickers, it's kind of cool, and more YMZ stickers, and one more driver, which is a Phillips head screwdriver. So let me go ahead and plug in the quad. You're going to need an Android cable for this. Um, I don't have the props on yet. It looks like the prop would be in the way, the way they have that set up here. So, all right, telemetry recovered. So we don't need to plug in a battery to activate the channel maps. So if you're trying to see if your radio is going to work, this is just a stock setting. Uh, they have magnometer turned on. I'm going to turn that off. They have barometer turned on. So we're going to go ahead and save and reboot. Looks like the OSD set up to say Eagle 1. And we want the arming, maximum arm angle at 180 in case we have to use turtle mode. I'm going to turn on RX set and RX loss as well. That, so that I have kind of an ESC beeper on here because they don't have any kind of beeper on this little quad. So uh, my power and battery settings, I'm going to change the minimum cell voltage down to like 3.1 um, just so that it doesn't start beeping at me around 3.5 when I kind of juice the motors. Sometimes when you like pump the throttle, you'll get throttle warning on the, or battery warning, voltage warning on the screen. And I kind of hate that. So um, it looks like it's set to drop for the fail safe. That's good and presets here uh, i'm gonna use the we're gonna use the uh, wtf and we got to go down to osd real quick just to make sure it's on hd it's already set to hd that's good i'm gonna turn off the warnings because i really hate that uh, timer two is on throttle position don't really need throttle position but um, it's kind of nice for you guys to be able to see that sometimes. It looks like it may have disconnected. I'm going to unplug it, go back in. And let's go ahead and go back in and check our channel maps. We're just going to see that everything in ELRS is working right. Um, I've got my battery information at the top of the screen. I just want to move that down real quick because I like to have it down at the bottom left. And you know, you can set up your OSD how you want. So let's go ahead over to channel maps now. That's in the receiver setting tab and everything is all wonky here. So right now it's set to CRSF, that's correct. But it, in the channel map it's set to RTEFEA, which is completely wrong. Um, let's bring that back over to AETR and see what that does. We'll hit save. We'll check our stick direction. So y'all should go left, right, just like that. Up, down for throttle, left, right for roll forwards and backwards for pitch that looks good so now we're right so now when we take off we're not going to like you know flip across the ground and crash uh if these channel maps aren't set up correctly you're gonna you're gonna eat it when you go to arm quad so be careful there let's check out the modes real quick arm switch is on auxiliary one that's usually me um angle i like to slide all the way over here and just scooch this little bar over i don't want horizon mode on it all i want is angle mode for just for taking off my little landing pad and then flipping into acro. Uh, angle mode's also good for if you want to try to fly this indoors, but I don't really suggest flying two inch on 4S inside. That would be insane. Um, if you have a giant house and you're like um, maybe an NBA star or something, a mansion, you'd be fine there. Uh, beeper on channel three, that's good. And 
instance, we don't have turtle mode on here, but I'm going to add it. I probably won't use it because I don't want to risk burning up my ESCs in the grass and doing something stupid, but what the hell, I'll just put it on there anyway. So everything else looks pretty good. I don't have my ESET, uh, my preset set up ESET. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We want to use WTF on that OSD. That's for DJI 03. And oh, we didn't go see what uh, port they have set for VTX MSP. So you want to have UART, it's on UART 1. So this DJI 03 is plugged into UART 1 um, for the HD. Actually, it's not a, it's soldered to the board. So it's not actually an HD style controller, which would be nice if it had a harness on there, but it doesn't. So VTX MSP. Display port. That's what we want, and that's UART one. So let's go ahead back to presets. Now, when we select WTF OSD, we need to select which port display port we're going to use. So we're going to use UART one there. Check that, and I'll close that and save pick. And now that's green, and we want to save and reboot there. So now we have DJI OSD HD should come up on the goggles at this point. So. Um, that looks good. And everything else on here I think is going to be good for flying. So let's just double check what version they have on here. Version is Betaflight STM32 F7X2 May 13th, 2023. So that's the latest firmware that they have on this board. And this is an F7, so that's awesome. So we'll see how it flies. Let's go ahead out now and uh, let's do some flying. And I'll give you my opinion on this quad. 4S 2 inch ripper. This thing should be like literally like a miniature. Like this reminds me of skateboarding uh, for some reason. It's just going to be that much fun. Here we go. All right, guys, now we're at the park. We're going to test this out. I'm going to test out their first battery. This is the 4S 380 milliamp battery. And we'll see how this one does. We'll fly it in uh, angle mode and then we'll try some acro with it as well. We'll also try out a 4S. 450 battery. See how many minutes flight time we get out of that. It's probably about 55 degrees right now, so we'll see how the flight time is. I just want to do a uh, quick little kind of line of sight test first so it doesn't fly off and hit me in the face when I goggle up. Still waiting on the connection to uh, the goggles. Hopefully that happens soon. There we go. All right, cool. Now we're looking good there. Let's go ahead. And wow, the, man, the DJI 03 looks so nice. Okay, here we go. All right, that's it for the line of sight flight test. Let's go ahead and uh, let's do a little ripping around the park. Looks like no one's walking yet. So let's go ahead and arm. All right, recording, and I'm in angle mode right now, just watching my uh, voltage. Went down to 15.4 from 16.8, so yeah, it's got a little bit of voltage load on those motors, but man, feeling pretty flowy. I haven't flown 4S on a two inch quad in years. Like, what you have to understand about this particular bind and fly is that it's kind of you know it's kind of a, a a progressive thing to try to manufacture something this small with this much power so that's you know that's 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 good okay now I'm in angle mo or acro mode and I don't want to push too much throttle yet because I just don't want to kill this battery totally it is a brand new battery now right now I'm down to 14.6 but it feels good. I, I feel like you could definitely put a bigger battery on this quad than kind of what they recommend in here. And I'm just going to fly this down to probably about 13.8 volt. I'm just going to keep going with it. And I haven't even really tried to like do any crazy freestyle just yet with it. But it feels fun. And I, I, I don't know if I'm recording with Rocksteady 2.0 active right now what you're seeing, you know, in, recorded from the DJI DVR, but 
14.4 volts right now. But I'm not seeing a lot of jitter from the props and all this power. Let's just go up high. Like up high is where you can really see a lot of vibes. Right now I'm at 14.2. So again, I'm gonna drive this battery down to about 13.8 volt. Should we go for that tree dive that we like to do? Down through the thick here. Uh oh. All right, I just crashed. So I'm gonna go pick it up and we'll try the other battery. I didn't make it through that dive, <laughs> but I tried. Okay, so I did make that dive, but who cares? Uh, quad looks like it's okay. I actually hit camera down. And I wish I hadn't disarmed because we, uh, we were sitting right side up. There's a little bit of mud here in the front, a little bit of moisture. It's kind of wet out here today. So let's wipe off the lens. Looks like the frame is totally fine. The way we hit it was kind of the perfect crash. I put some zip ties front and back too to hold down the cables so that they'll end up in these props because there's not a lot of room between the props and the, the body of the quad. So your DJI 03 VTX is probably going to have a pretty long cable here from the camera to the VTX. So you need to really like zip tie that down and secure that. So let's go ahead and try out the, uh, the 450 milliamp battery. It's going to twist the crap out of this battery cable back here. And for whatever reason, I, I was having a hard time getting my strap through the top plate. So I had to do it kind of uh, side to not my preference, but you can kind of see my strap is a little bit on, a, on an angle there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, plug it back in. Make sure my radio's on. And this time, let's try some freestyle, okay? And uh, let's talk about first impressions while we're waiting for the goggles to pair up. All right, there we go. So I'm just gonna look around real quick, make sure nobody's walking into the field. Some dog walkers around here sometimes. All right, now let's see how this tattoo battery handles things. Down to 14.8, and this battery is an old battery, so who knows how long this thing's gonna last, but let's go ahead and pop some freestyle real quick. A little bit of shutter coming back down there from that split S. Let's try a little tree dive here. Nice. It's capable. It's definitely capable. It, if I had a really nice battery, wow, my battery's done at 13.3. Holy crap. That's not good. This battery is almost dead right now. 40 seconds into the flight. So now it, it went back up to 14.3. But man, it does not like to, man, I wanna do that dive again. I really wanna make that dive today, you guys. So if I had some brand new like 4S 450 batteries or 550, I do have a 550 from Lumineer that I'd like to try. I really want that dive, you guys. Just couldn't spot it earlier. The last time I did that dive with a YMZ quad, I just went straight down. Kind of made it. That was fun. Try another split S. Oh, almost bottomed out. But my battery sucks. All right, I'm back up to 14 volt there. So it's definitely capable for freestyle, like. Super flowy, feels good. That's a lot of fun. A little bit of breakup and chop for my uh, DJI 03 for some reason. Two minute mark. Uh, you, you know, you're probably looking at like, you could probably squeak three minutes out on a freestyle flight if you have some brand new 4S 450 batteries. And that's what I'm gonna recommend for this. 450 and if you want a longer flight time, I'd go for a 550. Let's go through this hole right here. 
Nice. It's fun, you guys. It's super fun. So, you know, this is like, this is like the rich guy's like freestyle quad here. Um, micro brushless freestyle. I mean, 4S, under 250 grams, two inch. It's freaking cool. I, I, I just wish it was a little cheaper to, to build and set up. But then again, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see some price decrease for the O3 soon when O4 comes out. Because people are saying O4 is like pretty much here. It's all right, I'm up to uh, three minutes, but man, I'm down to like 13 volt here. <laughs> I just like totally killed this battery. Abusing my tattoo. So tattoo uh, Gen Zays, if you're listening, please send me a bag of new uh, 4S 450s. I'd love that. This was fun though. So let me come in for a landing before I totally destroy this battery. 12.9, oh my God. So when I land, I should have a little higher resting voltage. I think the battery actually went back up to 14.5 volt um, while the motor's are not armed and flying so yeah that was cool um it is like a lot of fun so I, i'm gonna say that it's is it worth the money i mean that's totally up to you if you if you need to have like the smallest o3 you can possibly find out there um i i would recommend decasing the o3 if you can get the decase kit from flywoo decase yours save a whole bunch of weight you might even be able to get this down like to around 100 grams that would be kind of crazy um and we'll probably see that coming up and it, they probably could have had this even lighter if they would have kind of reduced some of the aluminum on this frame the whole thing the whole top the top plate feels like um it's that kind of um maybe metal top plate or it might be the, actually it is carbon and then we have the two, the front and back plates are super thick um, and they're aircraft aluminum where I, I feel like that's the look that YMZ has been going for. They've been going for this kind of like, um, you know, Drachnite style look. I mean, we, we saw that before with the venting in the front by the camera here. This camera is totally floating, by the way. Like there's a kind of a, a, a silicone piece on both sides of this O3 and it's it doesn't even bolt to the frame it's just kind of compressed in here so this camera you can see like it's it moves a little bit and when i was first putting it together it kind of scared me because i'm like how is this going to stay in here but with a little bit of compression it's just compressed in here um, so that should take away a lot of the vibrations from the power system and this happens when you when you have 4s and you you make the props squeeze the props in closer to the frame the vibration to the camera goes way up. So that's the challenge with making a 4S two inch because you don't have your motors way out here like a five inch has. They're scooched in super close to the camera. So the tighter into the frame you get and the more power you get, the more vibrations you get and the harder it is to tune things. But the F7 was freaking awesome. And uh, the RCN power motors, 1204, 12 series motors, look like 5,000 KV on the gym fan 20. 23 uh, three blade props. They're nice. I wish I could get this antenna maybe a little shorter down so I have a little more clearance for gaps, but uh, I'm glad we made a, made a little bit of dive today and, and did some split S with it and uh, had some fun with some 4S freestyle on a two inch. That's, that's pretty cool. So I, I think it's pretty cool, just very expensive uh, for most people's taste. But let's go back to the bench now and uh, check it out just for a few more minutes and you can decide if you want one. It's up, totally up to you. But here we go. Let's go back to the bench. All right, guys, welcome back to the bench. Hey, hopefully you saw something you liked today about this quad. Um, right now, I'm going to kind of go through the, the pros and cons of this quad. Um, the first con would be obviously the price, $479, man, she is, you know, pretty pricey. Um, probably the most expensive little DJI 03 quad you can buy on the micro brushless scale. Um, very expensive, but I, I think it, for, for what it is, it, it looks super cool. It's a nice little quad. I mean, all the way around, like the design of it is pretty awesome. You even have detail on the inside back here. They have a little aluminum plate that goes over top of 
the receiver and it mounts it in a vertical fashion back there. It'll also fit probably a, a, a Nano, TBS Nano in there. And it stands it up and it gets it away from the flight controller and your O3. Um, so that's kind of nice. And there's two M2 bolts that hold it on on each side. So um, getting the antenna back through here, I had to remove the XT30 right here. It also kind of has a, a PCB that slides into the back side of this mount. Um, so it's very well thought out and engineered. The top plate, you know, we're looking at quite a few bolts here to remove the top plate. It's not going to be a simple top plate to remove. Um, the other downside of this quad would be putting this together with an O3. The, the easy part of it is that you just plug it in. Um, this little harness right here, you don't have to solder anything to the board. They already have the O3 harness there for you. Uh, and you know, no soldering required there. I haven't done any soldering on this entire quad to go out and fly this one today. All I had to do was put it together. So uh, yeah, plug in your O3, mount it. That was difficult. Um, so I'd say intermediate to expert assembly. Um, and you wanna make sure that everything has clearance here and that you also use the standoffs underneath between the O3 and the, the top plate. Uh, you just wanna be careful there that you're not touching anything in here. Uh, it is a tight build, zip tie front and back as well for all of your wires. Make sure they don't end up in the props. Uh, these 4S <laughs> motors that want running on 1200s here uh, will definitely eat up some, some cables, so be careful there. I like that they have a little antenna coming out the back here as well for their sort of miniature Immortal T for the ELRS. And the ELRS was super easy to bind up. That was not a problem. Um, now that I have it all together too, let me go ahead and give you the information as far as the quad weight by itself with the propellers on now and the strap, looking at 127.7 grams. With their battery of choice, the GMB 4S380, we're looking at like 167.4 grams total takeoff weight. So, I mean, look at that. We're, we're underneath the 250 gram mark, you know, way underneath it there. So if you wanna put the 450 on there, let's just go ahead and put the 450 on the scale and then you're probably looking at still way under 250 grams, 184.8 grams for the 450. And you know, you're probably gonna get three minutes out of this one. Uh, you're probably gonna get three and a half minutes out of the 450. And you're probably gonna get, I would say four minutes out of 4S 550. And you're still under 200, still under 200 grams right there with a 550. Illuminator 4S 550 gets me down to 189 grams total takeoff weight. So um, that's, that's pretty good. And this is the one I would suggest. It looks pretty large, but it still fits on top of the quad there um, for some longer flight time. If you want more of a freestyle battery, go for the, I, I would say the 450, just because the 380 for me, the voltage got so low on my OSD, it started to scare me. And when I brought them home, and I actually tested this on this battery checker, I mean, we're, we're at like, at a resting voltage of 15.2 volts right there. So, you know, I still had plenty of flight time out of this battery. I probably could have got another minute out of it. So you might be able to run this battery, um, you know, down a little further, but on the screen, you know, maybe the battery voltage wasn't calibrated inside beta flight, but, um, man, I, I could have got another minute or minute and a half out of this battery. So that's cool. And, and I like these, if you haven't seen these before, I'll try to put a link down below for these. These are super nice. They, uh, they have a whole bunch of different things you can do for different types of batteries here for checking um, cell per cell voltage and all that good stuff. So it's super light quad. Uh, you can also get it, looks like a few other variations. You could get the Air 3 unit with TBS Nano. That gets it up to like 500 bucks. So again, like the most expensive, tiny DJI quad out there on the planet. Um, but it is super cool. So O3 Air unit with no receiver. You might be able to fly it on the DJI transmitter. $464 without the O3 Air unit, just ELRS and a 2.4 receiver on there. $259 for that one. Um, and if you want to get it with the, without the O3 and a TBS Nano, $289. Um, so still like close to $300. Bucks. PMP, no receiver, no O3. We'll get you down to $244. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not a cheap quad. And I kind of wonder, 
are we going to see a CLRC come out with like their own variation of this little guy? Uh, because with the lighting, we saw the Drac Knight come out and it looks so similar to it, but it had a shorter, more squashed X look to it. But this one has a, a small squashed X to it, um, but it held up on the crash. I mean, we had a little bit of a crash on that dive. I finally made that dive kind of the half-assed version of that dive. Um, but again, it's like 75 foot tree. Um, yeah, and there's not a lot of spot to pull out at the very bottom, but it has good power and it feels, it feels solid in my hands. So, you know, most of the cons about this one is the price. Uh, putting it together is a bit of a chore, but once you get it set up, the pros are like, it's probably one of the neatest little quads that I own right now, outside of the Acrobee 7503 with my decased setup on that one for, for Tiny Whoop indoors, but outdoor micro ripper, holy crap, this thing is pretty cool. This is cool. Um, expensive, but cool. And it's a ripper. I, I would recommend building one. If you have the money, if you're that guy who doesn't mind spending this much money on a, a tiny micro with DJI on it, go for it. Let me know in the comments if you built one or if you have built one similar to this because I love micro brushless and this has been one of my passions on my channel for, man, for, for as long as when we were doing brushed motors and micro Siski controllers. I don't know if you guys remember those, but in the early days of brushed micros, then we moved over to brushless. So quite uh, an evolution of micro brushless over the past 10 years. Really cool. But you can check this one out in the link down below if you want to. Uh, if you don't want to, that's fine too. And I uh, hope you enjoyed just checking out this little small eagle, as they call it. Guys, take care. And I'll see you on the next one.